Good evening. This is the October 26th Park and Rec Commission meeting. I'm going to call the meeting to order. We do have a quorum. If you'll join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First order of business, uh, approval of the minutes from September 28th meeting. Motion approved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any, any changes or corrections? Otherwise, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Unfinished business. We have snowmobiling on the Eisenbahn Trail. I will take that one. Um, Prior to last year, snowmobiling north of West Bend was pretty much from the lighthouse lanes going north back towards Key Wascom on the Eisenbahn Trail. Uh, the Key Wascom Snow Chiefs um, came before staff and commission last year requesting that they bring the snowmobile trail into West Bend, um, basically into Barton off of Commerce Street. Um, they would stay in the gravel section of the Eisenbahn Trail where it turns asphalt, they would go off to the side of the, of the trail. Um, over Mies Products Driveway, uh, Commerce Street, and then do a little turnaround right there. Um, we always call it the Shep property. It's that little green space we have down there. Um, last year, the commission granted them a one-year variance for that, um, and it did go before Common Council because of the Commerce Street right-of-way, the um, road right-of-way that falls under their jurisdiction. So both governing bodies supported it last year. Uh, the Park and Rec Commission requested that we bring it back before the Commission this year for a one-year review. We did not have enough snow for snowmobiling last year. They did groom it. It's a good turnaround. Everything works for their groomer. They even use their groomer because they, they, they would, the snow chiefs would do all the maintenance, all the grooming. Um, where our wood storage lot is up there, they would have a little parking area there, plow it. They would do all of that work themselves. So. For them, they know it, it's very functional for their equipment and everything else, which is good, obviously. So um, we are back before the commission to see if you want to give them just a one-year variance or just continue indefinitely. And if there was ever a problem or a concern, we can bring it back to the commission. The comparison is out at Quas Creek Park. We have a snowmobile trail that runs through there. It was the same type of situation a number of years ago. Annually, it came back before the commission. Hey, do you want, will you allow snowmobiles? Do you allow snowmobiles? Kind of redundant, the commission said, allow the snowmobiles on an annual basis unless there's a problem mm -hmm. out at Quas Creek. So um, before you tonight, it's up to you. If you want to continue, just do one year or just kind of do an indefinite. And if there is a problem, we can bring it back to the commission. I think it's great for, uh, if we get snow, it's great for downtown Barton there. I mean, mm -hmm. you could go to five different places for a sandwich or whatever, you know. So I, I would say continue it instead of it going every year. Right. Continue forever, uh, not forever, but if all of a sudden snowmobiles are riding down the road and stuff, well, then yeah. we got to bring it back. Yep. Yeah. And the, the police department's still in favor of it, so, mm -hmm. yep. So. Yeah, treat it just like Quas Creek, yep. like you said. <clears throat> so we would problem. request a motion on that. I make um, a motion to, oh, sorry, you go back. The only thing I heard, had heard is the wood that's in the area where they're going to park the trailers. Is that going to be cleared so they can safely park in there? The, um, yes, there's enough room for them to park. Um, financially, we just ran out of money this year. We were going to grind the rest of the logs up for, in the chips. Uh, we're going to do that next spring with the contractor. So um, there'll still be some wood in there. According to the snow chiefs, there's enough room. Okay. There was a couple of logs sticking out closer to the trail. Dan and the guys are going to make sure that's all clear for them. But other than that, it seemed as if we would be, it, it should be very functional for them. So. And I know last year they, they said they would put up 10 mile an hour speed signs in the city and yep. they would take care of any, if the deck gets yeah. broke on the, the uh, bridge. Yeah, because um, the commission did request the, the 10 miles an hour, so yeah, yep. that's a good point to bring up, Mike. Okay, sounds well, good. I make a motion to continue it uh, every year unless the, there becomes a problem, and then we would bring it back to commission at that point. Is there a second? A second. There's a motion and a second to make it a kind of a permanent variance then. Right. Sure. Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. And new business program fees. 
All right. right. I will take those. We'll start up at the top. I'll just go one by one. Um, archery, no proposed change. Gymnastics, we run two age groups, junior and tiny tot. Um, looking at the activity guide from last year, there was a little discrepancy in how the pricing played out from the last year, depending on how many weeks the class was, it wasn't consistent. So moving forward, kind of like what we did with the women's health and fitness class, um, proposing $5 per class for resident, $7.50 for non-resident. Um, little hitters, baseball, no change. Uh, ice skating at Regner Park will still be free. Youth soccer, still free. Swimming lessons, proposing bumping that to $45 for residents and $67.50 for non-residents. Um, still pretty far beneath what the YMCA, our biggest competitor for that, would be charging. Um, having kind of reviewed the numbers for 2023, paying a lifeguard $17.50 an hour, um, I feel that that's a necessary change, even that $5 per kid or $7.50 for non-residents. Youth track and field, no change. Women's health and fitness, um, again, making it um, 45 for 15, so three per class, and then $48 for 16. And again, changing the fee to $3 per class. Moving down to some of our contracted programs, ballroom dance, um, Mike Maddock, the instructor for that, bumped it up to $45. That would be the only change there. Judo, both youth and adult, UW, Milwaukee, Washington County, increased their fee, um, $14 for that, so that would be their call. Kick Sports USA is a new program with Jack Anderson, who we've worked with in the past, so he's charging $25 for that. Um, fitness Boot Camps is another Jack Anderson one, $50 for that. Um, flipping on the Move, which is kind of a youth gymnastics type program, $39, another Jack Anderson one. We've ran them in the past, but they're new to the um, spring booklet, winter spring booklet, so that's the new program. Um, learn and play, something that we do with the school district. They pay 130 in the past. Um, between the transition, transition from Nick Lemke and I, I think that it was always um, expected from the school district that we would give them some money from the fees brought in just to offset some of the costs because they're giving them um, supplies for the activities that we do. So I reached out to the instructor and just kind of made sure that we were doing our um, portion of that. So in the past, we would have got all 130. We came to the agreement that we would pay the school $25 per kid that signs up. Uh, music lessons with the West Bend Music Academy, so no good, no change to any of those. Beginner guitar, beginner piano. Learn to play the drums, beginner ukulele. And then the Red Cross babysitting course, no change there. And then for Courtney's programs out at Lac La Ron, Winter Wonders Luminary Walk does not have any changes. And Lac La Ron Winter Fun Day, um, she's going to propose increasing that to 12 for residents and 18 for non-residents increase to match similar class fees that she's running out there. Okay, any questions on that? Looks fair, you know, you gotta- hey, What are you gonna do? Raise them where people are paying, so you gotta raise right. a few, a few things. So. And I know we still try to keep it affordable and we yep. do keep it as lean as we can. I agree. Okay, I if there's no other- approve. There's a motion to approve, is there a second? Sarah? Yep, I second. Okay, motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thanks, Ryan. Then we are at donations. All right, I have donations two and three on the list. They are both from the West Bend Friends of Parks and Recreation Department. The first one is $8,000 for the Aqua Glide inflatables that we will be implementing at Regner Beach next summer. And then the second half of that donation is $1,000 that was used to purchase life vests for the Regner Park Beach in the summer of 2024 and beyond as well. So thank you to West Bend Friends of Parks and Recreation for that donation, those donations. I have a donation for uh, the All Abilities Playground, uh, the fence picket donation for $100, and then an additional $400 
from the same donor, Thomas Limbach, um, for a total of $500 for the All Abilities Playground. Another one came in just yesterday, so I'm going to add that in, yep. uh, if, if that's all right. Uh, West Bend Riverside Disc Golf Club, they recently had a tournament at Riverside, and uh, they gave a donation of 180 so I'd like to present that for acceptance tonight as well. That's great. <clears throat> Is there a motion to accept these donations? Motion to accept. Well, motion. Is there a second? Second. And car is second. Any other discussion? Well, is, uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. We love those donations. Reports, Chairman. Uh, enchant we all see the enchantment in the parks going on. I'll plug the, uh, the Friends of the Parks are doing a reindeer, reindeer run down there this December 9th. A 5K run and one mile walk through the beautiful Regner Park, all decorated. So that's going to be a fun time. I'll be down there. I'll, I'll, do, I'll be doing the walk one, though. <laughs> Secretary, I uh, will skip that. Uh, quarterly trust report? <clears throat> um, not too much to mention. In the PARC fund, you can uh, finally see that deduction of $18,000. That was for... Carl Cuss field lights and the uh, lifeguard stands in Regner Park. Um, again, at the next quarterly trust report, you'll see some money coming back to the PARC -P account um, as a, it was a reduced cost because there was some minor damage at the stands, whatever, just some paint scratches. So some of that money will be coming back a little bit. For the dog park, um, again, those are just maintenance fees um, for. Um, for the volunteers in operation out there. So yeah, this time of year, it's normally pretty quiet on this report, so, mm -hmm. yep. Thanks, we don't need a motion for that. That's just for That's information. Just an and we all got uh, in our packet an uh, email about uh, from Rick, Dan, and Courtney. They're all keeping busy with uh, updates to well, the barn improvements, the camp lodge improvements, and winterizing everything. And then Courtney, of course, was busy with the luminary walk, and, and they're getting in classrooms this fall. So they're all really busy. Ryan, you got anything else? Yeah, a couple of things to touch on. Um, so fall recreation programs are completed. Another successful round of those. Um, two weeks left of the swimming lessons for this session, and then we'll break until January in the new year, and then we'll run two more sessions of those before the summer. The youth dance program has begun. Um, we just finished ordering roughly $10,000 worth of costumes for all of the 199 youth dancers, so trying to figure out the sizes and <laughs> all of that fun stuff is a little bit of a, a challenge this year, staying within the budget, but we got it done thanks to... Carolyn and Tanya and Monica, the head dance instructor, for their help with that. Um, purchased the Aquaglide equipment from Kiwaskum. Dan and I went and picked it up two or three weeks ago. Um, I also purchased 40 adult life jackets, which are sitting in the Parks, Rec, and Forestry conference room. So at some point in time, I just have to get those labeled and then figure out a system for those to implement in the summer. Um, also started drafting some of the proposed rules for the Aquagalide area with um, working with Ian, the city attorney, just kind of um, shooting ideas back and forth with him. And then the last thing that I have is that the first lifeguarding course that I'm offering starts the first weekend in November. Uh, right now I have three guards enrolled, so um, they all came. Um, they're all friends of lifeguards that had worked in the last summer, so I'm sure that they're going to be good candidates. And then I also have an interview with a guard next week that already is certified. So good. hopefully four potential lifeguards for Regner already on board next year. Is that enough to do a class? Um, ideally, you'd like four, five, six, something like that. But I'll, I'll take what I can get at this point just because I do foresee a lot of them coming back. So I don't think that the or one on the one need. Is probably nice to have. You can get a little you can get through it a little bit quicker yeah. for sure. So. And the inflatables, that they're in the shop then? Were they are in the shop. Dan was able to rearrange some things and make some room in the shop there. They instead included of all the site. totes too with, with them, right? Yep, yep. Um, super, super easy transaction. They helped us load it onto the trailer. They offered to send 
their um, expert on them, I'll say, to help us out for the first season when we're trying to get them all anchored down and figure that process out. So it was nice to work with. Our very team. grateful for Kiwaskum's help yep, with all that of was that. Great. Thanks. And Mike, you got anything for us? Uh, I just in front of you this evening, I put um, our, some budget information. Um, the one sheet up on top it says public notice. That is your entire city budget. Um, you know, 2023, 2024, you know, some of the changes, things like that. Uh, as everyone knows, uh, new assessments came out this year. Uh, there was a 43%. and purchasing power. So you look at where the costs are, you go out and buy two by four today versus six years ago. That's kind of where we are. Um, I also have a staffing sheet, you know, with some of our staffing reductions over the last couple of years, number of properties we've gained. Um, one thing in our budget over the last six years, our contractual services has gone up 44%. Mm -hmm. So our mowing contract, our cleaning contract, things like that. So we're not, asking our mowing contractor to mow more it's just costing us more so th there are some of those increases our forestry operating budget over the last six years has not gone up one penny our overtime budget over the last six years has gone down by 20 percent and um, my biggest concern over the next two years are the lifeguard situation uh, just financially mm -hmm. without the county's assistance we would be uh, we would be having different conversations uh, with the county's assistance, we are very fortunate. And for the four years, we're very fortunate. But after 2024, we're going to need to have, or midway through 24, have some serious conversations about the future and funding to support that. So we want the pond open, and we got to pay for it. Mm -hmm. I understand that, but 
there's also a reality. Someone's got to pay the bills. So we got to figure out how that's going to happen. So hopefully the inflatables next year create a buzz. We have, you know, increased revenues that way, more people. Um, will we increase the inflatables in the future in 2025 or something? I don't know. Um, I think the situation we have right now, I think we're, we're lucky that Kewaskum had this situation and they've been great partners and for $8,000 of donated funds to bring those um, to Regner Park next year, I think it'll be, I think mean, it, it's a great move, I think, financially and just the experience, you know. When I took my grandkids there, they lived in Kewaskum. Yeah. That was the most used thing. Yeah. That's where everybody was at, those yeah. So So it, it'll be nice to, um, in my opinion, improve the experience in Regner Park. I think it'll be cool, so. That's what I got, Mike. Is there a point where you have a discussion about adding another employee because of the increase in contracted services? Contracted services, um, how about the river walk, you know, things like that. So, yeah, I've mentioned it to the city administrator already and the mayor. So. I imagine that as those costs go up, I mean, sometimes maybe it might be a little more feasible yep. to so. have a, another employee. Yeah, I mean, we're fortunate, like our cleaning company, they do a great job for us and they haven't skyrocketed prices. They really haven't. Uh, we've been crazy lucky with them. It's the mowing contract is really what's been driving this up. Um, and if we want those areas mowed, which we need them, you know, it's kind of tough. We got to pay for it. So. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have anything for a good of the order? I will adjourn then. <laughs>